Did the police really arrest, question, and then release the three men they suspected of having killed crime boss Robbie Lawler? Were two women arrested with 50,000 euros, moving that money to pay for a hit? Welcome to Crime Chronicles. Stay tuned as we dive into the crazy life and death of Irish crime boss Robbie Lawler. It was April 1st, 2020, but this was no joke. Two men approached an apartment in South Belfast, while a third man kept his distance and acted as a lookout. The apartment's occupant comes to the front door and is visible to the watching third man. Three days later, the man from that apartment is shot dead. The man who was shot dead was notorious Dublin gangster Robbie Lawler, and the men who went to his apartment in advance of the shooting might well have been an assassination team ensuring the shooter would recognise his target. Everybody in Ireland knows the name Robbie Lawler, but who was he and how did he become one of the most feared criminals on the Emerald Isle? Lawler was born in the late 1980s and grew up on the north side of Dublin in a predominantly poor area with high unemployment. During his teenage years, Lawler got involved in petty crime and left school at a young age. He started selling drugs to make money and quickly rose through the ranks of Dublin's criminal underworld. Robbie Lawler was a violent and ruthless character. He was well known to the authorities as being involved in serious violent crime, as well as large-scale drug trafficking. During his short life, he amassed well over 100 convictions involving multiple armed robberies and drug offences, as well as being implicated in a number of murders. Lawler didn't confine his criminal activities to Ireland. He was also involved in organised crime on the UK mainland and further afield in Spain. Throughout his life, Lawler's notoriety grew and he was regularly one of the most wanted men in Ireland, continuously on the guard eye's radar. Despite his deep involvement in organised crime and his multiple convictions, Lawler never spent serious time behind bars. In 2005, the first documented murder to which Lawler is believed to be connected was that of drug dealer Mark Byrne. Byrne had previously got into an argument with Lawler while they were both incarcerated in Dublin's Mountjoy prison. Byrne got shot on a busy street just minutes after being temporarily released for a day on compassionate grounds. The gangland-style shooting happened in broad daylight at approximately 10am and saw Byrne shot three times, once in the head. This was one of the first signs of Lawler's brutal, vengeful streak. He got arrested for the murder but was never charged due to lack of evidence. Then, in 2008, Lawler was arrested for a shocking gun attack on a man who was minding a baby while sitting in a friend's car. The gunman came up to the car and fired five shots through the driver's window. The shooting left the man in critical condition and also injured the baby. It's believed that the gunman was Lawler, who appeared to have some sort of personal grievance with the victim, as well as there being a racist element to the murder attempt. Strangely, once again, Lawler managed to avoid getting charged. One year later in 2009, David Fred Lynch, another well-known gangland figure, was gunned down in North Dublin on his 26th birthday. His body was found in a field by a passerby out walking their dog. He had been shot three times in the head. Guard I believed Lawler, who was still only 24 at the time, targeted him after a personal argument. However, Lynch was also known by the police as an associate of one of Lawler's rivals. It's been reported that prior to his death, Lynch had received numerous threats. He allegedly got lured to the field after receiving a phone call asking him to meet, potentially to engage in criminal activity. Although Lawler is rumoured to have been involved, he was never charged with involvement in Lynch's killing. As we can see, Robbie Lawler has been in the middle of some very violent activity while being only just out of his teens. But have no fear, it didn't stop there. The list goes on. In 2010, Lawler was in the frame for the killing of small-time criminal Noel Deans. It's been reported that Deans owed people a lot of money for cannabis, while other sources say the killing was linked to a grudge with the real IRA. 
Authorities believe that Lawler was paid to carry out the hit, and in a truly twisted act, Lawler perversely drank tea with Dean's heartbroken mother just hours after allegedly assassinating her son. This incident further shows just how cold-hearted Lawler really was. It should come as no surprise that once again, although fingers were pointed and authorities suspected Lawler, he wasn't charged with Noel Dean's killing. Lawler was becoming a major target for the guard eye. He was involved in many different feuds over the years, including the Drahida and Kulok feuds. Sources say that he had a lot of blood on his hands. He appeared to be more of a lone wolf, a freelance hitman, and in the last few years of his life, Lawler had made enemies pretty much everywhere. Here are two other high-profile crimes attributed to Robbie Lawler. The attempted assassination of crime boss Owen McGuire, an attack that left him paralyzed, was suspected of being the work of Robbie Lawler. In a bizarre incident only one hour after McGuire's shooting, Lawler was stopped by the road policing unit for driving at speed with a flat tire. The officers discovered Lawler stripped down to his underwear and doused in petrol. It is believed this strange behavior was in order to remove DNA and gunshot residue after the shooting of Owen McGuire. And secondly, the execution of hitman Kenneth Finn, killed by a single shot as he waited in his car, was also purportedly the work of Lawler. Finn was a hitman and a close associate of a notorious crime boss known as Mr. Big. Lawler had had a falling out with Mr. Big over money years before, and Finn's killing had all the hallmarks of being carried out by Robbie Lawler. These two incidents had made Robbie Lawler the number one target, not only for the guard eye, but also for two big time organized crime figures. Further proof, if it were needed, of just how terrible Robbie Lawler was occurred towards the end of his life. He was unhappy that his ex-partner had moved on and was in a relationship with a new man. Lawler physically assaulted her, causing her bodily harm, as well as threatened to kill the mother of his ex-partner's new man. In this instance, Lawler actually spent time in prison while awaiting trial, as he had been refused bail. This time it seemed he might actually be held accountable for his actions. But no, as if coated in Teflon, the charges just seemed to slide off Lawler, and he was ultimately released. The incident that would start a chain reaction finally leading to Lawler's death would occur in December 2019. He was mugged after leaving a gym, an incident which was filmed by his assailants, suspected to include Keen Mulready Woods, a teenager involved with a rival gang. Mulready Woods would be subsequently lured to a brutal and horrific death, suspected to have been ordered by Robbie Lawler. During this daylight assault on Lawler, the assailants stole his gym bag and flip-flops, posted photos of them wearing the latter after the mugging. The assault was allegedly at the behest of a criminal foe of Lawler. In ruthless revenge, Keen Mulready Woods was killed. His head and hands were severed from the body, and bags with his body parts were left on rival turf and holdalls. The presence of flip-flops in the bag with Mulready Woods' remains, dumped in Coolock, was widely interpreted as a threat not to cross Robbie Lawler. On the 4th of April 2020, Robbie Lawler was shot and killed at around 11.50 a.m. at a house on Etna Drive, Ardoin, in North Belfast. Authorities believe he had been lured to his killing, possibly to collect debts. Lawler was 36 at the time of his death, and who actually ordered his killing hasn't yet been established. Was it someone connected with the Maguires or Mr. Big? Or was it Cornelius Price? a well-known enemy of Robbie Lawler. CCTV records seem to show that the three-man hit squad were present and observing Lawler in the days preceding his death. In the aftermath of the shooting, they were arrested together in a car near the murder scene. However, none of the men were charged and they were released, a decision that has baffled people familiar with the case. In another line of inquiry, authorities arrested two women in County Leash. They were found with approximately 50,000 euros in cash that Gardai believes had been collected by the women at a service station on the M7. The women were travelling back to Limerick when they were stopped and the money was found in their car. 
The women who were from Limerick and are in their 20s and 30s were questioned at Port Leash Garda Station before their release without charge. Investigations into the origins of the money were continuing, but Gardai suggest it may have been a payment for the criminals for their role in aiding the murder of Lawler, and that the women were acting as couriers in collecting the cash. Two men, Adrian Holland and Patrick Tear, have been charged with involvement in the murder of Robbie Lawler. Neither is suspected of being the actual gunman, but both are charged with murder as part of a joint enterprise with others. It seems that the wild and crazy death of Robbie Lawler will continue to leave us without answers for a bit longer. He lived a turbulent life full of violence and criminality, yet he was rarely held accountable, leading some to speculate that he acted as an informant. Robbie Lawler might be dead, but it seems that the book of his life is still being written. If you like today's story, then give it a thumbs up or maybe leave a comment below. If you want more of the craziest crime stories, then hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to be notified every time we release a new story.